Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. Uh, this is uh, Professor Onuk Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. We are in the fifth uh, week lectures. Uh, this is in sequence 25th lecture. <coughs> Today, uh, we will learn uh, about principal stress uh, in two dimension, in three dimension, some are easily introduced, some are introduced with mathematical concept with uh, tensor calculus. So, uh, e whatever you understand uh, it is uh, good, otherwise I would suggest you to refer some advanced books as it is listed there or maybe some advanced books on tensor calculus. So, with that we will step forward for uh, the recapitulation slide that uh, is as usual history of aircraft and uh, aerospace structural analysis or solid mechanics. Then external loads, uh, structural details, load factors all those things we have seen, how it affects, uh, how do external loads come those are experienced by different uh, structural parts. Then shear and moment uh, effects on fuselage and wing, how 3D truss is used uh, in aircraft structures. One big example is landing gear, other examples are maybe tail boom of a helicopter or there are many others, these are two visible distinct places where we see. So, like that uh, we, we have also covered different energy methods to find out deflection, how deflection is important. In uh, probably last or last to last uh, lecture, I have uh, tried to tell you in detail. Introduction of theory of elasticity already you have you are introduced with theory of elasticity stress and equilibrium equations we have done in our last lectures. And today we will be covering some topics which uh, encompasses the stress transformation and we will solve a small problem. We will uh, try to derive uh, the principal stresses, we will try to have the idea of principal stresses. So, that idea is important uh, and uh, that plays a big role why stress is important, principal stress is important. Uh, principal stress is important in the sense that is the highest amplitude of stress acting inside the structure because of different loading condition and that may directly govern to failures uh, like say if it is a tensile failure or a compressive crushing failure. Those are the stresses uh, which is since those are maximum in amount in magnitude those uh, leads to that type of failure. So, for a combined stressed body where three dimensional stress is acting. In practical actually all the structures whatever we see uh, are experiencing almost all the components of uh, stresses like starting from sigma 1, sigma, sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, sigma 3, 3, 2 normal stresses, 2 shear stresses like sigma 1, 2, sigma 2, 3 or sigma 1, 2, 2, 3 and 3, 1. So, all stresses may act. So, in combination of all stresses, 
which one and which direction it becomes maximum that is important to study we need to find out depending on that structure is designed. So, that is the reason it is very very important those are having some important properties and we will observe those properties. So, let us move uh, to the first topic, first topic is a stress transformation. In stress transformation what we do is a simple way how a stress is transformed. This is probably covered in your mechanics in some, some courses and if it is not uh, with a some skip, some detail uh, we will try to cover now. So, uh, what we are, uh, we have in our first figure, uh, we often need a to find stresses at some other plane of a body. So, this stress transformation is uh, brought fast uh, to be before the principal stresses, because uh, the principal stress is obtained from the stress transformation unless we have the concept of stress transformation, it is difficult to imagine where uh, the principal stress is acting. So, in this particular case uh, again my aim will be to, to discuss more on, on concepts uh, like how does it act, where it acts, what are the phenomena those things. I will also try to cover mathematics whatever is written on slide and the way it is done, but some of the stuffs as I say are probably will not come into your understanding uh, as and when it is said. You need to put some time to understand those, uh, you need to put consult some other books to understand those. I would suggest if you are planning for higher studies, you should go through those and try to understand. Okay. Again, uh, we are going away from today's topic. So, let us start today's topic. What is the stress transformation? The need is that uh, to find stress at some other plane. Okay. We can uh, imagine some element in books uh, in many times this element is uh, shown as a rectangle uh, sorry a square, uh, but it is not necessarily to be square. So, it is uh, considered as a rectangle here and that rectangle uh, because of uh, the external loads is experiencing uh, possible all stresses. We are not considering the third dimension, third dimension which is uh, towards the board or away from the board. It is considered that it is a two dimensional uh, case where a plane is under these stresses possible stress components are as we see the normal stress is shown as sigma x x sigma y y. This is balancing one and we also have tau x y. Last class we have a uh, establish that there is also always a complementary shear stress. So, these are the complementary components. So, once we have these two pair, they are also must have these two pair, these two. This pair should come along with this pair. So, now the question as we have started that uh, we need to find out stress say on this inclined plane inside the, this element that inclined plane is denoted by A B and uh, we are separating out that here. Once we separate it out there, we do not know the stress condition at this plane that is the reason we have put that sigma n is acting normal to that plane and there is one more component that is tau n t or along the plane. So, uh, this idea already we have that uh, even if there are uh, other components in two dimensional cases, uh, all those components uh, may sum up to these two components one which are orthogonal to each other uh, 
90 degree to each other sigma n and tau n t. Sometimes uh, n t is drop, it is directly said as tau. So, other components as it is shown here, those are brought here. Only thing is that uh, we, it is given a finite uh, dimension, a small dimension that is uh, very small delta x in this direction, delta y in this direction and it is delta s in this direction. So, uh, if we try to consider the equilibrium in x direction that is what uh, this is the force amount, this is acting in this direction tau x y del, del x is acting in this direction, this is considered the other direction sigma n uh, okay, theta is not shown. So, this is theta while this is theta. So, if it, this is theta then uh, we have that delta n cos theta is the component and delta s is the area considering unit width uh, of the element and the other tau is having sin theta component. So, we get this equation in this direction. Similarly, in the vertical direction if we consider we have sigma y y d x the area we have tau x y this tau x y acting on delta y and sigma n sin component it is acting upward whereas, this is acting downward it is on the other side of the equal sign. So, it is having minus sign and it is in this form. So, it is acting in vertical direction. Now, if we solve these two equation we can easily get this equation and this equation solving I have skipped. Uh, intentionally. So, it you can easily do because it is already covered otherwise uh, I can give you a uh, simple idea to do it. If we multiply this equation with cos and this equation with sin, this with cos, this with sin and add it up this portion will cancel and we will get the expression of sigma n and this delta y by delta s which is nothing but the cos. So, other cos will come from here. No, we are multiplying with the cos that makes the cos square theta. So, similar way we can find we can find out that sigma n equals to sigma x cos square theta plus sigma y sin square theta plus tau x y sin 2 theta. And the way I have said if you follow the same way and uh, some simple subtraction of the two equations will lead to the expression of tau or shear on a plane which is at theta angle with vertical. Okay. So, with that small concept uh, we are trying to solve a problem. Uh, in this uh, the problem is shown on the figure, uh, it is also described in the writing. So, uh, let us read the writing first. A cylindrical beam, this is the cylindrical beam of circular cross section circular cross section supports a compressive load 50 Newton. This is the compressive load 50 Newton, 50 Newton, 50 kilo Newton applied to its free end this, this section is the free end at a point 1.5 mm, 1.5 mm below a horizontal diameter in the horizontal plane of symmetry. This is the horizontal diameter and the horizontal plane of symmetry below that that is the reason from that point it is 1.5 mm below. 
together with a torque of 1 to 0 0 Newton meter the torque is 1 to 0 0 Newton meter. Calculate the direct and shear stresses on a plane inclined at 60 degree to the axis of the can cantilever axis of the cantilever is this one at a point on the lower edge of the vertical plane of the symmetry. So, it is asked that at this point what is the shear stress on a plane inclined 60 degree to the axis to the axis. So, uh, we need to find out that. So, to find out that uh, it is a combined bending and axial and torsion problem there are two pro two loads external loads actually one is uh, this axial load other is torsion but since it is not acting on the axis of symmetry it will produce some moment uh, so that moment we need to find out and there is a torsion and because of that the element here is stressed and what are the stresses and stress components that we need to find out so the direct loading system is uh, equivalent to an axial load of 50 kilo newton together with bending moment of that's what the bending moment comes here 50 that is the kilo 1.5 newton millimeters that means 75000 newton millimeter newton per millimeter I think it is a mistake, it is not oblique, it is Newton millimeter, this is Newton millimeter. So, uh, with that note, uh, therefore, at any point on the lower edge of the vertical plane of symmetry there are compressive stress due to the axial load that 50 kilo Newton and bending moment which act on planes perpendicular to the axis of the beam and are evaluated below. So, the sigma x direct P by A axial load only that is uh, 50 kilo Newton divided by the area we get 17.77 Newton millimeter square. And uh, the other way bending stress m is the bending moment here y is the how far it is from the axis of symmetry this is 30 that is 30 is there is the y i is the section moment of inertia of that uh, circular section it is put here and we get that 3.9 sorry 3.5 Newton per millimeter square. <coughs> Both are acting actually uh, as a compressive load because we are talking about the lower point. <coughs> so, uh, with that uh, condition we also have a shear stress. The shear stress tau x y at the same point due to the torque is uh, this is the amount of torque and then uh, the similar way we put the torsion formula and uh, we get this is the value of uh, polar moment of inertia of that particular section 30 is the radius and we get that 28.3. So, uh, we, we have normal stresses as well as shear stress. Now, we, we observe that the stress system acting on a two dimensional rectangular element at the point is shown in the figure. It is same figure we are uh, considering, uh, we do not have any problem only it is said that this angle is 60 degree. The instead of uh, specifying this angle in the problem this angle is specified. Note that uh, since the element is positions at the bottom of the beam the shear stress due to the torque is in the opposite direction of the shown positive direction. So, the torque 
tau is acting in this direction, tau is internal, so it is acting in this direction. Again, sigma n and tau may be found from first principle. or by direct substitution in the previously derived equation. So, theta is 30 degree that is what I just now mentioned here the in the according to the problem it is mentioned that this is 60 degree. Figure is not conforming to that uh, please consider that this is 60 degree that is the reason we have saying that theta is equals to 30 degree. The total compressive stress we get as minus of 21.2 Newton here we have a need a oblique per millimeter square compressive sigma y is 0 there is no force in the y direction tau x y is minus 28.3 Newton per millimeter square. The negative sign is arising from the fact that it is opposite direction to tau x y as shown in the figure. Now, uh, what we, we do we simply substitute the values in the equations and we get that sigma n is equals to minus 40.4 Newton per millimeter square. So, it is minus that is the reason it is not in this direction, it is in this direction and it is compressive in nature. And uh, whatever tau we are getting is that 5 Newton per millimeter square square acting in the direction a b from this to this, this direction is ok. Different answer would have been obtained if the plane a b had been chosen on the opposite side of e c. If we chose choose a plane something like this uh, or something like this, then we will have a different answer. So, that is what uh, is said the direction may change because it is on the other side plane which is uh, uh, 90 degree apart, but anyway we have considered this way and uh, the problem is solved. So, let us go forward with our next topic. Uh, in this topic whatever what we have are introduced uh, that stress transformation, that stress transformation we have written uh, in tensorial notation, we are considering that the prime axis which is given by alpha beta is the uh, transferred axis system or the plane system on which uh, we want the stress to be found out. And uh, the known system where uh, the sigma i j is the stress, stress condition and we have uh, the direction co co cosines known as L alpha i and L beta i. And since we are talking about two dimension that is the reason 1, 2 is considered here, but it is also applicable for three dimension 1. <coughs> the same equation we will use this in different way written uh, to derive the principal stress we will see that time. So, to understand this in a better way we have used uh, some diagram theta 90 degree minus theta all these things are given. Uh, alpha i and beta j are the direction cosines as it is given and as an example uh, alpha 1 1 is cos theta, alpha 1 2 is 90 degree minus theta equals to sin theta, alpha 2 2 is cos theta and alpha 2 1 is minus sin theta. Now, if we consider uh, as an example the 1 1 uh, as the normal stress, so i j is equals to 1 1. Uh, sorry alpha beta is equals to 1 1. So, this is 1 i this is 1 j. So, if that is the case only i j to vary that is what 1 1 2 2 1 2 2 1. The variation of i j is considered and uh, similar way whatever values are coming as 1 1 since these are both are 1 it is 1 1 1 1 here it is this is 2 2 both 2 that is the reason these two are 2 here 1 2 that is the reason 1 1 1 2 here 2 1 2 1 is there. So, accordingly if we substitute the values from here we get the equation whatever we have got for sigma n. So, 
So, uh, this is one good understanding and uh, that this small tensorial expression can uh, give us the coordinate transformation very easily and uh, stress transformation to a different coordinate or to a different plane. With respect to plane, it is easy to understand, but actually we are imagining a different coordinate system, which is inclined in that manner. In three dimensional, in two dimension, in it is very easy to imagine. In three dimension, I, I would uh, request you or uh, suggest you to to form some some axis system like my three fingers, and then uh, you can have rotate this axis system. I do not have two right hands that is the problem. So, you can uh, make uh, one more uh, right, ang right angle system and put along with this and with respect to this center or maybe having a translation. You can easily imagine the uh, how it changes the axis system from one to the other. So, keep it in mind we are considering both as right hand Cartesian coordinate system and uh, unless you prepare one template following that it is difficult to show you. So, uh, I would suggest you may do it and experience it. So, this is a small topic introduced in between uh, just as a reminder we need this always uh, in different condition we will repeat it again. Uh, it is uh, something very interesting it is a T e, this surface normal is given by this oh, oh. I think I need to go backward yes this surface normal is given by in 1 i into j and into k and the traction force is given by this T 1, T 2 and T 3 n is because it is on the n plane, the plane which is denoted by n and the internal uh, stress system we can have that is equals to sigma n and uh, tau n t which is acting and the amplitude we can easily find out simple from the vectors rule already we have considered. And if we expand this which is the equilibrium equation nothing else this is the normal and tangential component of this the stack traction force and this is the internal force sigma i j which is in balance this is the equilibrium equation we have found out. So, if I know all these components we can easily find out these components and if we can find out these components if one of these are known we can find out the other is once we know the coordinate system n j is the components of unit vector that is cos unit normal this is n with respect to the j. And, uh, this is similarly sigma j and sigma tau uh, may be found out. That means, here it is talking about this. Okay, so, <coughs> we move forward uh, to the next slide principal stress. Principal stress is really important uh, point to discuss. We will introduce it with respect to two dimension first and uh, we will go forward with advanced mathematical derivation for three dimension we will find out and uh, again we will discuss principal stress in the next lecture and we will see. So, in this uh, condition what we do is that uh, we have sigma n uh, considering a plane which is <coughs> at an angle theta. And uh, if we want to find out the axis system or the plane along which this is maximum value we need to find the partial derivative part of with respect to 
theta that is what is done here. If we do that derivative if you, you please note that that leads to this equation we will come to that later 2 i is uh, cos theta sin theta sigma x minus will come because cos is there this is uh, 2 i is sin theta cos theta and uh, this is tau x y cos 2 theta 2 will come definitely in all the cases 2 are there. So, uh, if we make that thing is equals to 0, we get an angle tan 2 theta is equals to 2 twice tau x y by sigma x minus sigma y. I would suggest you carry out this. That uh, simple mathematics is not the topic of discussion here. Here the topic of discussion is that see we, we with that value substituting that uh, we can have two values of sigma that is sigma 1 and sigma 2. This derivation is available in all books I would suggest you refer that. We can have the two values two roots of sigma n which with, with replacement of theta as sigma 1 and sigma 2 this is the convention it is given sometimes sigma numeric 1 numeric 2 not that Roman 1 Roman 2 which is sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus minus half root over sigma x minus sigma y square plus 4 tau x y square. Now, question is that uh, this is these are the two normal stresses where we have tau equals to 0 that is the reason I said if you derive this we get this equation. And this if we put this equation is 0 that is nothing but the tau is equals to 0. <coughs> so, uh, we have that plane where tau is equals to 0. So, in the other sense uh, in a in it is a very common practice to say that uh, that uh, principal stress is the stress or the maximum stress at a plane where tau or the shear stress is equals to 0. And those are the maximum values with possible combination of orientation of axis system different way orientation of plane where we are trying to find out normal stress where sigma 1 is the maximum or major principal stress and sigma 2 is the minimum or minor principal stress. So, this major and minor terms are used popularly. Note that sigma 1 is algebraically the greatest direct stress at the at that point since it is having a plus sign while sigma 2 is algebraically the least. Therefore, when sigma 2 is found out considering negative sign it is uh, possible that sigma 2 to be uh, numerically greater than 1 while it is sigma 1 while its value is negative. So, uh, this is a good point to note that uh, the compressive stress may become larger in numeric value uh, in some condition. So, uh, it is not that uh, th since it is having a plus the material the, the, the maximum stress is experienced by while we are considering plus value only. Plus value is only showing that the material is in tension, but while uh, it is negative shine it shows that the material is in compression. So, uh, in this point uh, for the maximum shear stress if we talk about uh, the tau we have in similar way we can have that it is the angle tan 2 theta again we can find out, but it is inverse and minus sign is there with respect to this. So, please note that uh, this is a different angle. Uh, so, we have a different angle 
In this context, it is better to remember the Morse circle cycle, sorry, Morse circle of stresses where we put in tau and sigma axis uh, the values of at different orientation uh, of plane, what are the normal and shear stresses are. And if you look at those values uh, that uh, in general case, uh, if it is the Morse circle, this is sigma, this is tau, we will find that this is the sigma 1 and sigma 2 or maybe the other way. I think better to show it in the other way, otherwise confusion will create. This is 2, this is 1. You please note that uh, in this condition at these two points tau is always 0, but while tau is having maximum value sigma is not equals to 0. So, that does not mean that the normal stress is not there is no normal stress on that particular orientation. So, keeping in mind that thing we would uh, like to discuss one interesting problem. So, before we go to that interesting problem which I uh, will discuss partially and I would like to ask you to explore on yourself. Uh, tan 2 theta we have down uh, put uh, for the maximum value, these values we, if we put uh, in the equation previously said in the last one, we get that the tau max value is nothing but sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2. Above equation give the maximum shear stress at the point in the body in the plane of the given stress, given stresses. For a three dimensional body supporting a two dimensional stress system, this is not necessarily the maximum shear stress at that point. So, that is the reason we are repeatedly saying it is a two dimensional case we are discussing. Since maximum principal stress plane angle is the negative reciprocal of the maximum shear stress angle, then the angle 2 theta given by these two equations differ by 90 degree. So, or the planes of maximum shear stress are inclined at 45 degree to the principal stress. In this case, uh, uh, I would like to give you a good problem that is what uh, I thought. If we consider one element and if it is Under this <coughs> stress condition, there is no shear stress acting, and if we imagine one element inside which is having 45 degree angle I would like to suggest you to find out what is the stress condition. stress status in this element and uh, uh, this is very interesting problem uh, with correlation to a problem while we, we twist a chalk and it fails, it fails in a very particular orientation uh, that may be discussed in some other way in some other opportunity, but this is very interesting problem uh, you can solve it and observe. It. So, let us uh, move forward with our next topic. Next topic is really is it is an advanced topic. I would will try to oh, try to cover as much as I can. It is uh, <coughs> uh, as much as I can. Uh, it is derivation general derivation of uh, principal stress 
we have derived in uh, two dimension, but in three dimension it is difficult to derive. So, with res respect to the tensor calculus and Lagrange multiplier concept, we will try to derive. Given sigma x x at a point, we seek a direction n equals to n p as it given such that normal stress is the extremum value. That is the problem in, in mathematics point of view if we talk about we want to extreme find out the extremum or the extreme value or the maximum minimum value of the normal stresses in a orientation which gives the maximum. So, if we consider that sigma m n is a general expression of a stress and uh, if we consider only the normal stress of that component that becomes uh, in boils down to slowly from m n reduces to only n and then it is one direction and we get that sigma i j and direction cosines if we multiply it becomes this way. So, the normal stress at any plane which is L and L i L j uh, direction cosine is having n p say is denoted by this tensor. Now, uh, this is the usual uh, way of telling that this, this, this uh, property to satisfy and this property to satisfy is uh, direction cosine property is to sati satisfy and that same thing is said again into different way. And this is also L square M square, this is nothing but this, these are also same thing. So, uh, it is stated in a different way to give you understanding for the thing which uh, we are going to do. Now, we are bringing one concept of a Lagrange multiplier, we will extremize the equation A, the normal stress to be extre extre extremized with respect to i j. But what is the constraint with respect to n j as I said with a restraining condition equation B that means it should maintain the we, we, we are transferring the coordinate system, but that coordinate system should follow the Cartesian coordinate system rule that is the Cartesian coordinate system rule this is the Cartesian coordinate system rule. That is the reason is saying that restraining condition equation B it has to follow that. We, uh, we, we proceed to extremize the following function with the introduction of Lagrange multiplier. We, we are going to extremize this function where the normal stress is given by this. We are considering that the sigma is some value the normal value of it and it is following the same rule of Cartesian coordinate system as it is given here that is substituted back with respect to n 1, n 2 here and we are supposed to take the derivative of it. Okay. Derivative of it with respect to what? With respect to the direction, right? the normal stress we need to find out the extreme value with respect to the direction we need to take the derivative and that derivative is considered here. So, partial derivative of f n i is considered here, it is written uh, the same thing once again only this sign is partial derivative sign is put here. Now, uh, on the left hand side is, is uh, something what is uh, done uh, with skip of these steps. This derivation we are considering with respect to some arbitrary direction s first and if we go on the derivation of s first in this, this, this way in between we get this similar to this one equation. So, uh, this is this equation we get uh, n s n j n s is there. Uh, the first term this it, it will lead to do two terms this, these are the two terms we are getting and then here sigma 1 this is constant constant we will not get, get that this is actually a square term that is the reason 2 sigma n i del n i del n s we are getting. 
Now, uh, this will lead this derivative will lead to the Kronecker delta this Kronecker delta uh, uh, I think I have not discussed earlier. Uh, Kronecker delta is better to discuss now I should have discussed earlier. So, if you find earlier you please refer to that the Kronecker delta is the delta wh while both the subscripts are having same value it is equals to 1 otherwise it is equals to 0. So, if I say delta i j equals to 1 while i is equals to j is equals to 0 while i is not equals to j that is what the Kronecker delta is. So, this derivative actually leads to this Kronecker delta and similarly other Kronecker delta also we find. Now, with this uh, what we have uh, this leads to this, this leads to uh, this I think uh, you can easily say that if we if we put this this property we get this value this uh, uh, remains in this sense. And uh, a, a good observation and a, a little knowledge of tensor calculus if you put you will find that this is equals this step as I said is the in between step this one and if we follow this step this actually leads to this value i s is uh, substituted here with the j i j and uh, this value we get and this is actually the condition of principal stress this sigma is the principal stress value which represents in three homogeneous simultaneous equations if we expand i j to this value and we can find the values of sigma for a non trivial solution of this part. With this concept uh, I would like to conclude the uh, principal stress we will come back again with principal stress concept we will discuss and uh, we will go further with different values of principal stress. As I mentioned important things on the plane where principal stress acts the shear stress is equals to 0. Principal stresses we need to find out in design cases because that may govern to failure of the system. It may be compression, it may be tension and the maximum shear stress also we need to find because sometimes the failure leads from shear stresses. So, with this note uh, we move forward with the standard uh, books uh, whatever I have covered it, it is available in these books only and uh, we, we conclude the today's lecture. Thank you for attending and we will move forward for a, our next lecture. Thank you.